Hello, I'm Logan. And I'm Jimmy. And we're going to be bringing you this week's broadcast. First, we're going to be talking about Raider Life, where myself and Maddie Hartford got the chance to interview a few people who went on the Quebec trip. Also, Catherine talked to a few people about the Students Against Deadly Decisions. Today, I have here with me Mr. T, and I'm going to be asking him some questions about the Quebec trip. Now, Mr. T, what did you do in Quebec? Uh, it was a fun-filled, exciting trip um, to Quebec City where we rode a ferry across the St. Lawrence River. We got to see the walled, walled city of Quebec City. We did a pretty awesome toboggan ride that uh, probably went 30, 35 miles per hour. Sounds like fun. Um, probably something that you wouldn't be allowed to do in America due to <laughs> liability issues, but thankfully, uh, Everybody had a great time on that. Um, I guess sledding was kind of a theme because we also did a tubing at a tubing park. They had over 42 different tubing runs. Um, what else did we do? We did a little visit to a museum about, uh, about the battle for Quebec when the British took it from the French. Nice. We went to a mall for lunch and they had an indoor roller coaster. That was interesting. What else did we do? Um, yeah, just different cultural yeah. trips that I'm having trouble remembering. <laughs> at the moment. Now, what was your favorite thing to do in Quebec? Uh, it's hard to put a finger on any one thing. I mean, I just enjoy the experience of it. It's kind of like, obviously, a, a way different culture than here in America. So it's, I kind of equate it to Europe. Uh, so it's it's like going to Europe with without all the travel hassles. Um, yeah, I, I just enjoyed walking around the city. I mean, it's, it's different enough to be really cool. Yeah. So Ryan, why did you go to Quebec? Um, so I went to France last year because I had taken French, and I had originally wanted to be a uh, translator. So I wanted to like travel to different countries and stuff. That's cool experience the culture, so um, I wanted to see how different Quebec was from France. We speak a lot of French for practice. Um, we spoke some like to like a waiter or someone when we had to buy something, but not like We went to a mountain that was all tubing, no skiing or snowboarding, it was just every single side of the mountain had a tubing hill on it. There's actually a giant tower that we went down. It was like a roller coaster type thing, but you weren't like strapped into anything, so it was scary as all heck. What was you guys' <laughs> favorite thing about the trip? By far, I like the tubing. Yeah, I like the yeah. tubing, but I like um, the Hotel de Gas too, yeah. which was the Snow and Ice Castle. Last Wednesday, you may have noticed that some of your classmates were missing from their classes. Well, that's because the members of the Students Against Deadly Decisions Club had an in-school field trip to make PSAs with Media Power Youth. First, I interviewed Mr. Hess, the leader of the club, to hear what he had to say. What were the PSAs made for? So, with the Students Against Deadly Decisions program, we created these distracted driving PSAs uh, to educate, of course, um, to warn, um, and hopefully we, we did it in a way that's engaging. Um, and the idea is to, well, the idea is to show them. That's what films are for. So um, we, we can string these three PSAs together um, hopefully, um, maybe show them at a local movie theater on the local TV. We're working on these things. Um, and of course, uh, show them to our students. What was it like to work with Media Power Youth? It was, it was pretty cool. We had a really long day, uh, one day, but uh, they start with a beginning, middle, and end. So uh, they come in, uh, Ms. Shanahan comes in, and we go over what is a PSA and what are the types of things that we're trying to look to show everybody in these PSAs and we look at commercials and cool things like that and then the second day uh, Miss Shanahan um, really took the show I, I didn't have to do very much um, and we were what in and out in and out in and out of the building and um, but it was very easy to do uh, from the standpoint for me um, at the same time I got to see how the professionals make these PSAs which was kind of neat pretty cool yeah so what's next for SAD Okay, well next we have a speaker coming. We have a speaker coming um, Wednesday, I think it's the 23rd, and um, Kara Filler, and she's a professional speaker, and she'll come in and motivate us to, and get
get us to think about um, distracted driving and um, how um, vehicle crashes are really the number one killer for teenagers. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. I also interviewed Carly Town and Jerrica Tremblay, both members of the club. So what was it like to work with Media Power Youth to make your PSA? It was really fun. The, the lady that helped us out was really nice and she was provided a lot of good information and insight on how they make the PSAs. What was your PSA about? It was about a driver that got in an accident because his friends were in the car and they were messing with music. Sounds interesting. Um, did you have fun making the PSA? Yeah, it was really fun. We borrowed Mr. Hess's car, so it was pretty cool. Was it fun to get out of classes for a day? Yeah. And then, would you like to would you like to do something like this again for SAD? Yeah, I think it was a beneficial day for all of us because we all learned about distracted driving and how it's not just texting because that's the one we hear about the most. What was it like to work with Media Power Youth to make your PSAs? It was fun and it was interesting because they have different technology than we have, so we learned new things. Um, what was your PSA about? My PSA was about friends and distractions with music in the car. Did you have fun making it? Nice? Yes, I did have fun. And would you like to do something like this again? Yeah, it was a good fun day hanging out with the kids in our sad group and recording videos for our PSAs. Hey, do you want to do something? Like what? Um. I don't know, maybe we could like, go get Froyo or something? Froyo? Sure, why not? I'll drive. I think we should ask Carly if she wants to talk. Uh, she lives just down the road, I'll show you. Hey Carly. Hi Kathy. Hey, how's it going? Good, Michael, how about you? Good. Wow, this car ride is really boring. Michael, you need to put on some music. Turn on the AC because it's going to get hot in here. Okay, this music is horrible. Why? It sounds awful. No, it doesn't. Well, what do you want to listen to? I don't know. Luke Bryan? Country? Yeah. No, you're both wrong. You need something good. Like, I don't know, Nickelback, Backstreet Boys, anything? Something like that. Nickelback? Are you from the 90s? What? Hey. Thanks. And now, everybody taking us on a tour of Cottage Corner. I have another senior with me, Carol Lipschultz, and here's what she's doing after BHS. What colleges have you applied to? Um, I applied to Bowdoin, Brown, Colby, Connecticut, Union, Dartmouth, Earlham, Kenyon, Middlebury, Rhodes, Reed, and Carleton. And where have you been accepted to? Um, so far I've been accepted to Earlham, uh, St. Mike's, and Rhodes. Nice. Have you toured any of the campuses? Yeah, I spent a night, a couple times actually, at Colby because my sister goes there. Um, it's in Maine and it has a lovely campus. I toured Dartmouth and I haven't been able to tour any of the other schools. I drove around Bowdoin, that's about it. Alright, what have you seen at the colleges that you liked a lot? Um, Campus-wise mm -hmm. or like with the people? Both. I really like the collaborative attitudes that I've seen at a lot of the colleges. I like it when the students work together instead of trying to push each other down with their intelligences. They try to build each other up and fill in the gaps of other people's intelligences. And I love spread out campuses with lots of greenery. I don't like city campuses. Alright, what are you most excited for? Um, being able to explore different fields that I haven't in high school, maybe different humanities, other aspects of education that I haven't. Alright, where are you going to major in minor? Um, I will probably major in biochemistry, maybe minor in neuroscience, um, yeah. And your career afterwards? 
I'm thinking of pharmaceutical development, but I'm not sure yet. All right, very cool. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Thank you guys for another fantastic segment. Up next, we have Emily and Nick for this week's update on sports. Spring sports will be underway next week, and we had the chance to talk to coaches and athletes about their upcoming season. Mr. LeBlanc, the boys varsity baseball coach, told us that to get ready for the upcoming season, he plans to have the boys hitting in the indoor cage and have them do a number of fundamental hitting stations. He also mentioned that installing team defense and making sure everyone knows the team plays and signals will be very important. Also, Coach Lander from Girls Varsity Lacrosse got back to us and stated their season training will consist of conditioning, basic knowledge of the game, skill work such as transition, offense, and defense. Coach is looking to accomplish a team who comes to practice physically and mentally prepared each day. Their main goal is improvement from beginning to end and in increasing their knowledge of the game, the skill, and their team. Now let's jump to some interviews about lacrosse and track. All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Anna, what sport do you play? I play lacrosse. When does the season start? March 21st. Have you been training? No. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what position are you? Uh, center mid. What do you need to work on to be a better left player? Run more. <laughs> what is a team goal you look forward to accomplish this season? Probably win zero games. Yeah, me too. All right, are you excited? Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Jake, what sport do you play? Uh, I'm playing lacrosse this year. Have you played before? Um, when I was younger, like 10, 12. Have you been training for the season? Yeah, every Sunday. All right, that's good. What do you expect for your first year in varsity lacrosse? Um, a lot of contact and fast pace. Definitely. Are you excited? Yeah. All right, nice. Thank you. <gasps> when does the season start? March 21st. Have you been training? Yes, I have. What events are you competing in? Running. <laughs> I want to do the 100, the 200. Probably the 400. What do you expect to take place during the season? Pain and suffering. Injuries. Winning. <laughs> Are you excited? Uh, sure. Absolutely. I'm like wicked excited. I'm pumped. <laughs> Thanks guys for that amazing segment. Up next, myself and Tim had the chance to ask people a question or two for the BHS poll. Stay tuned. No! <laughs> Mrs. Downey, if Hi. you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? Lasers! To be invisible. Well, you heard it here first at the VHS broadcast. Eternal youth. Flying. Obviously, you're uh, like... Well, I mean, who doesn't want to fly? Emma Chase. <laughs> Emma Chase, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? Hmm. Super speed. That's a good one. Miss <laughs> Hamilton, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? If I could have any superpower in the world, I would want to be able to transport myself like that to anywhere I wanted to go. Nice. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? I would have, I don't know. Um, what is it called when you're like invisible? <laughs> invisible. If I had a superpower, I guess it would be teleportation. Would you use it for good or evil? Good. Mr. McNabb, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? Read minds. 
Nice. And always know what's happening. Yeah. DeLuca. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? The power to have any power. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> so, Miss Ruby, what superpower would you have if you could have any? I would like to have super healing power, and with my super healing power, I want to have x-ray vision so I can tell if any students have broken bones. That's a good, that's a good power. So, Keegan, what power would you, superpower, would you have if you could have any? A super speed. Good power.